So I'm going to just start with um, this, the case, the information we've recently learned about um, Mr. Nyswanger. Um, those court documents, pretty shocking. He said he's been attracted to children as long as he can remember. Um, he said there's probably other victims. When you hear about this, what's your reaction? Um, we're devastated to learn that somebody that's been in our employment since 2005 uh, is really been harming children. And so our number one priority right now is to identify who other potential victims might be. Uh, we're in the process of contacting all of the families that have had students in his classroom. Uh, it's close to 400 students uh, over the last 14 years. And we'll be sending out letters today to contact and, and uh, make sure they're aware of it and uh, who to contact if they need help and how to navigate the difficult conversation. It's, it's a very difficult uh, and hard thing to ask your child about sexual, potential sexual abuse. So the first report in 2012 was for conduct that allegedly happened in maybe 20, uh, 2008. And I know you were not in this position at the time when That's that happened. Correct. But do you have knowledge now of what the district steps were? Were parents notified at the time? So to the best of our knowledge, uh, we are in the process of I interviewing all the previous uh, leadership uh, that was around at that time, but to the best of our knowledge, we were not informed of that. They went directly to the police department. Uh, we're searching our email archives uh, and uh, trying to find out if there's information that we missed. Uh, but what we know right now that that was something that was not reported to us. Is that common practice? to have an investigation against a teacher that wouldn't be reported to the district? Um, based on what uh, we've learned from uh, law enforcement is that individuals have rights until they are uh, charged or convicted. Uh, and this individual was not charged. And so uh, it was an unsubstantiated allegation, I believe. And so in that case, uh, they don't reach out to employers, uh, any employer, whether it be working with children or in any other situation. In a hypothetical where they had reached out, let you know, we're looking at this, and then they come back and, you know, it's unfounded, what is the district policy for a situation like that? You know, if you have someone who's been accused of something awful, but there's no evidence to back it up, um, how do you proceed? Well, so there's a lot of things that we can do. We can increase supervision uh, uh, through proximity of where an individual might be located in the building, uh, make sure that, uh, that their windows, if there's windows um, looking into their classroom, that those are available, that there's nothing covering them, uh, letting them know that we're aware of it, uh, checking in and checking out every day. Uh, so there's a lot of things that uh, we can be aware of. And just making sure those best practices of not having students alone in your classroom, uh, the door open if a student is in there, maybe uh, at, at a lunch break uh, looking to get help on a question or a problem. Uh, so there, there are those things that, uh, that we just consider best practices to make sure that students and staff are all uh, in a safe place. Do you know if he had windows that were covered up or doors covered? No, I do not believe that he did. Um, he was moved uh, from last year to this year. Uh, there was a new principal that came in this year and uh, and uh, did move him downstairs next to his office uh, based on just um, uh, concerns in general of following the rules. Uh, and, um, and so uh, that's one of those things that we can do is increase proximity. That was based on a January report uh, that came out that contributed to that information. So that's my next question. When the January report comes in, um, as far as we can tell from court documents, a report was made. There's no follow-up in the documents of what really happened with that report. Mm -hmm. um, um, but it sounds like the district was notified. We were notified in January, and based on the information that we had then, uh, it uh, w was not reported uh, in a sexual nature. Uh, it was absolutely inappropriate uh, boundaries and inappropriate touching, but not, um, not that rose to the level. What we did was we did uh, follow our investigation protocol. We uh, reported to OCS, the Office of Children's Services, which is our primary reporting agency, uh, and we took action. We can't certainly talk about the disciplinary action that we took, but we did take action. Part of that was the move. Putting him in a that was not part of okay. that, uh, um, and I can't just okay. speak to that. Um, 
So in September, there's a third report. What happens when that third report comes in? So when this report came in, we followed our exact same investigation protocols, and immediately in that investigation, uh, the uh, individual admitted uh, to uh, wrongdoing. So we had, we stopped our investigation when we believe it's a criminal act. We immediately stopped our investigation, handed over to the experts. We had our Palmer uh, School Resource Officer escort the individual over to the Wasilla Police Department. That's the jurisdiction that it happened in, even though the initial in, uh, interview with the individual took place here at district office. And from there, then Wasilla uh, Police Department took over. Once he had been escorted to the police department, was he ever back? in the classroom? No, he was on administrative leave uh, as soon as we had uh, heard about the uh, allegation. And his standing with the district right now? Uh, we're in the process of terminating him. Okay. And when you heard about, when the January report came in at that time, was the school district still unaware of the 2012 investigation? That's correct. Okay, got it. So what, um, what words would you have for parents, and I know you're sending out a letter, um, but but what would you say to parents who are just probably horrified to, to see this news? Um, how can you make them feel confident that kids are safe in the district? You know, in our district, uh, uh, moving forward, we spend a lot of time talking about external threats in schools, and of course that's been on the national news, um, shooters, school shooters, uh, violent acts, uh, and, we, and we do a lot around natural disasters, fire drills, uh, earthquake drills, uh, but we don't talk a lot about internal threats, and it is an area that we uh, need to increase our professional development around, annual trainings, uh, and really making sure that we're very explicit all the time about what our expectations are uh, for educator um, conduct uh, and so moving forward that is going to be something that we are going to be doing we also will uh, uh, be moving to a dual reporting system whenever it comes to uh, incidents of child abuse child um, harm sexual abuse that will be reporting to both the law enforcement agency and the office of children's services to ensure that if any agencies had information that maybe didn't move all the way through uh, to charges uh, that we would be uh, working to help connect the dots between those different agencies is that a policy change that has to be made or is that something you can just send an email this is what we're doing now? Uh, part of them will be policy changes, administrative regulation changes, and then practice changes. Okay, and so it's that sounded like training for staff. Uh, it, it, are you also including in these conversations um, school talks with children about what is and isn't okay? So we have curriculum that we have been teaching uh, and uh, part of it is part of our great uh, body shop curriculum and we do talk about good touch, bad touch uh, starting as early in primary school. Okay, and so that will continue? That will continue. Okay. Um, can you say today with confidence that there's not another teacher in the district who is currently teaching who's had similar allegations against them unfounded or not? I, I cannot answer that question with confidence. We over, have over 2,000 employees, um, and so that would be a difficult thing for me to answer. Um, what I can tell you, though, is uh, what we're seeing nationally is that uh, people that intend to do harm to kids, especially uh, sexual abuse and sexual misconduct, are gravitated towards fields where they have access to children, whether that's uh, through uh, religious organizations, uh, through physicians, we saw that with the women's gymnastics organization, uh, that we have to know that they might also be gravitated towards education. And we're just gonna have to be very diligent and mindful about that moving forward. As a superintendent, you're kind of driving the bus, is that scary for you? Uh, to, just to know that, let me elaborate, not driving the bus being scary, but is it concerning to you that this is a, just, this is a place where people like this Mr. Nicewanger might purposefully try to infiltrate? Um, this has been incredibly stressful um, and 
parents send their children to us believing that we're going to keep them safe. And uh, every day there's amazing things happening in our schools. Uh, and so when something like this happens, it's a loss of trust with families for every school and every educator. Uh, and uh, so moving forward, we will have our eyes wide open in every area that we can uh, to ensure that, that kids are safe. And sexual abuse in schools has happened in the past. Uh, I hope it never happens again in our district, but it certainly will happen again in the future in our nation. And uh, it's one of those things that we have to raise to the level of school violence and natural disasters. We just have to um, be diligent on it. You mentioned you have a large teaching staff. Um, how, is there any kind of review process? Is there, uh, you know, behind the scenes, maybe would you take all of those names and just send them over to Wasilla and just make sure there's nothing in the background that you haven't been alerted about? So our vetting process for hiring employees is, is quite rigorous. Employees have to have a background check, a person's of interest, and a fingerprint. So if there's any charges that have been against them, those would surface during that. They have to have three reference checks, one of their most current supervisor. Uh, once they are with the school district, we do not do ongoing background checks. It's something that we would have to work through our unions uh, to make sure that uh, it's something, I mean, we would have to negotiate for that um, but I think that uh, in working with the state our teachers get uh, recertified every five years uh, they answer questions about charges that may have come up uh, but it's not an, a formal background check again and I think that that would be a good thing to do uh, every five years throughout your career to have that background check again I think that uh, ratcheting up that safety I think is really important is that something you'll ask for in your next contract negotiation um, we have not completed our review. Um, we're still in the initial stages of responding to this, but we will do a full policy and, and practice review. One of the things that we initiated at the beginning of this year was we started background checking our volunteers. Uh, so our parent volunteers in classrooms, uh, now they do fingerprint and person of interest reports. So it is something that each year we do gap analysis in areas that we can do a better job at. Does school policy currently prevent you from letting parents know there's been an accusation against a teacher even if it's unfounded? Yes. Okay. Uh, and it's not just school policy, but it also is uh, their legal rights. It would be a violation. Uh, it could be considered slander or defamation of character if you uh, spread a, an allegation that wasn't substantiated. So in a situation like that, I think um, that's what you had mentioned earlier. You just take all the internal steps you can to monitor the situation until something else uh, arises or changes. And I think everybody in our community, including me, you, it, this is that struggle between an individual rights and the good of children and the good of the whole. And uh, we would all like to err on the side of children um, and w just constantly pressing and trying to make sure that we can uh, continue to increase our safety and security. Is there anything else you wanted to say about this particular case? or investigation or anything else you want to let parents know? Uh, if they believe that their child or another child um, is a victim uh, by this individual or any individual in our organization, please reach out um, to the Wasilla Police Department. Uh, if you're uh, if you're struggling with having that conversation with your children, uh, please just call our district office and we can have a school psychologist or a school counselor sit with you and ha help you navigate that. Uh, it's, it, we, we, our goal right now is to uncover other kids that might be, have harmed.